I paid 100 days of Graveyard Keeper. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome to a 100 day Graveyard Keeper video. In this video, we have just one goal, to progress as quickly and as efficiently as possible. I have no experience with this game, so it will be interesting to see how far we get. So we start off by talking to a talking skull here named Jerry, and we meet our magical donkey friend as well, who will be responsible for delivering corpses to our fabulous looking graveyard. Once the corpses have been delivered, it is our responsibility to ensure that these corpses are professionally exposed of. We can however extract various parts from these corpses, such as flesh, upon doing so I learn a burger, a sandwich and a baked meat recipe. Once the flesh has been extracted, we can then take the corpse over to our actual graveyard and bury it. In order to bury the corpse, we do have to make a gravesite of course, and every time we make a gravesite we will actually lose a little bit of quality here. One of the main goals of this video is to increase the quality of the graveyard by as much as possible. Once the corpse has been buried, I will get a burial certificate which I can sell, which for now will be my main source of income. So it was time to head into town and meet the lovely NPCs. One NPC in particular we wanted to meet was Haradric, who we can sell burial certificates to and get money from him. Money is needed to purchase lots of key items in this game to make progression. Haradric would give us a letter to give to the blacksmith and the blacksmith now gives us a quest to slay some slimes, which we done right there. Once the slimes have been defeated, we'll be awarded with some simple iron parts and these will be needed to make things like furnaces and structures like that down the road. Tasks such as foraging, cutting down trees and mining will award us with technology points. The technology points are needed to unlock technologies in the huge technology trees that this game possesses. In order for me to build up the sawhorse, I needed a hammer. And I didn't realise that I left a hammer in the trunk over by the church. So I went all the way back to the church, got my hammer and I also got a pickaxe, flesh and some other bits and bobs that were needed to make some progression in the game. I also picked up some stone and wooden repair kits that I could use to repair some of the grave sites around the graveyard here, which would increase the quality of the graveyard. So I had four stone repair kits in total and I could use these to fix up some of the stone structures. The quality was a whopping minus 27 at the moment, so I had my work cut out for me. In order to replenish energy in this game, I had to go to bed. But when you go to bed, time does fast forward. You don't actually pass out at night in this game. And what you find is that when you start doing tasks such as cutting down trees, making items, your energy bar does get low very, very quickly. So micromanaging energy consumption is something that you have to think about all the time when you play this game. There is, however, lots and lots of items you can get and eat that will restore energy that this game has to offer. And we delve more into that as we progress through the game. So it was back to Hardtrick here. He gives me a free bear for helping Kresvold slay those slimes, which is great. I can now give that bear to Jerry, which will complete our main quest. I also gave him a burial certificate here too to get some more money. And then I went down to the farmer here to purchase some seeds. So I wanted to purchase wheat and carrot seeds just to see how effective they would actually be in the game. It was also a source of food for me as well. So if my energy got low, I could just eat a few carrots and replenish my energy that way too. Once the seeds were purchased, I cut down a few trees around this area, brought the logs back to the lovely graveyard and I started mining up some stone. The donkey also dropped off a fresh corpse for me to extract flesh from. <laughs> I also spoke to Jerry here, he wanted his bear, gave him that, got 20 friendship points with Jerry there and he was very disappointed with the bear. He then gives me a quest to get him a silver star wine and that takes a very long time to complete. It was then back to the actual graveyard here outside the church, just trying to improve the quality of that. Got more technologies got the chopping spot and I also went for stone working too so I could cut up big stone chunks to make pieces of stone and stone repair kits which would help me repair up the graveyard and make it look nicer. So I found some iron ores just north of the actual graveyard here and I spent the rest of the day just mining up all these. I also managed to make my first furnace and I could use this to smelt the iron ores into iron bars so I could make some nice tools. In order to make the ores into ingots, I needed fuel to put into the actual furnace here. I had lots of sticks accumulated from cutting down trees and whatnot, so I put all those into the furnace and then decided to smelt lots and lots of ores into bars. I can only afford to do four bars right now, but that will gradually increase as the game goes on. It was time to get hard spars, so now I could extract more stuff from the lovely corpses that the magical donkey delivers. And it was also time to set up our little farming patch, so I'm going to put down some wheat and carrot seeds. I decided to take a look around the map to see what else was out here. I came across an NPC here called Dig. So Dig basically sends me on a quest where if I can get him some honey, he would teach me the recipe for the cake, which was pretty exciting indeed. Once I was finished with Dig, I went more eastward and I found an NPC here called 
the Astrologer. The Astrologer had some pretty cool inventory wares, but before we could access those, we had to build up a little bit of friendship with him. He did give us a quest to get him a skull, thankfully I had one of those lying around, so I was able to complete that quest straight away. It was back to the farmer of course to get more seeds, because I wanted to make a pretty big farm, so I could get tons and tons of carrots and other items where I could constantly replenish my energy. It was then time to build a chopping spot, and the reason why I had to build this was so I could access more wooden items, such as firewood for example, and I could also use it to make wooden wedges too, which is a requirement to access new areas in this game. This game is filled up to the top with areas you can access, provided you have the required materials to unlock those areas. Most of the time spent playing through the first 100 days of this game will be acquiring materials, unlocking areas, and just doing basic progression. So, it was time to smelt more bars from the furnace there, and I had enough technology points gained to get more technologies. This time we were going to go with primitive forging, so I can make the wooden anvil. With the wooden anvil, I can make nails, and I could also make simple iron parts as well, which was also needed to advance the game. I also went down into the basement area here of my house, and there was lots of stuff I could break open down there to get more resources. You could also make really cool stuff down there too, but we'll get more to that later on in the game. So, it's time to make some simple iron parts and some nails, so we can unlock some new zones. But my energy was really low, and a very common theme that happens to me when I play this game is constantly running out of energy, and I have to go off then and forge stuff or go to bed to try to replenish energy again. I was trying to avoid sleep as much as possible to get the most out of the days in this game. The day cycles are very, very short. So, when I accumulated more energy, I made more simple iron parts. I also got a body off the donkey too, so I extracted that for some flesh, and I also pulled a skull out of the body as well. After that, it was going to be back to the graveyard to bury this body, and we're going to try to increase the quality of the graveyard as well. Speaking of graveyard quality, we were making some wooden markers here, and we could use these to increase the quality of the graveyard. So any sort of gravesite that didn't have any sort of a marker down on it, we just used wooden markers. Eventually, we do get much better stuff that we can replace the wooden markers with, that will increase the quality a lot more, but for now, that's the best we got. It was time to get a carpenter's workbench so we can make planks and wood repair kits, so we unlocked that technology straight away, and it was time to build up the carpenter's bench. All I needed to make plants was flitch, and I had lots of flitch accumulated from cutting down tons of trees, so I can make a total of five planks there. The only drawback to this now is that because I'm making so many items, my energy just plummets down. But we did have lots of carrots we could collect from the farm, so the carrots didn't take too long to grow, which was great. And you also get some seeds back as well when you pull the crops up out of the ground. So I had a big pile of carrots, and it was back to work again. This time, I was making wooden grey fences to increase the quality of the graveyard beside the church. I then went into my house, and I tried my hand at some basic cooking here. I was just making some flour from all the wheat that I pulled up from the farm. And this flour will come in super handy later on, especially when it comes to making dough and bread and cake and things like that. I also used the well here too when I got some buckets of clear water. And we could use these to get back regular water so we could turn the flour into dough. So I don't actually use this dough right now, I end up processing that later on. It was time to make some upgraded tools so I can make the axe number one, the shovel number one and the pickaxe number one. And this means less energy consumption when I'm running around the map collecting resources or shoveling things up from the ground. I also came across a cool scene here where I met an NPC called the Inquisitor. And <laughs> this guy is absolutely hilarious, he loves burning witches. After watching the cutscene of this witch being burned, the Inquisitor basically tells me to meet him one week later and he might have some tasks that I can complete to gain his trust. This was a requirement in order to progress through the game, as I needed certain items from the Inquisitor in order to get various church upgrades down the road. So, unfortunately, we had to help the Inquisitor in his quest to burn out all the witches. So I made a compost heap here, and I had tons of crop waste accumulated from pulling up all the carrots and wheat from the ground. So I was going to use that compost heap to make some compost, and that'll come in super handy later on in the game. It was then back to the graveyard outside of the church here, and I was just going to upgrade all these grave sites with wooden markers and wooden fences. Eventually, I can use stone markers and stone fences, but I needed a few more technologies to access those. Speaking of technologies, I went back into the autonomy and alchemy tree here, and I learned some more technologies where I could extract more stuff from the body, such as intestines, hearts, brains, fat and blood. <laughs> I was attempting to make more complex iron parts there needed to clear out some of the areas underneath my actual house, so I could unlock some shortcuts, but the usual drawback was energy. Once my energy had accumulated, I finished off making those iron parts, 
And I also got a body from the donkey as well, and this time I could extract a whole array of parts from the body. And I imagine that most of those parts at the time would come in handy for some sort of quest down the road. So I did try to extract as many parts as possible. I did make some stone gravestones here, which were much better than the wood markers, as they had a much higher graveyard quality on them. So I was going to replace eventually all of the wood markers with these stone gravestones. The graveyard quality was coming along nicely, I now had it down to minus one, I then made some flower beds, and this was just what I needed in order to increase the quality to the point where I could progress the main quest of this game. I got the quality up the tree with the first flower bed, and I saw how effective they were, I then decided to gather more materials and make more flower beds to get a nice quality increase for the old graveyard here, I now had a quality of 11, which was absolutely marvellous. There was still a lot of work to do with the old graveyard, but for now, that would do. It was time to make more planks because I really wanted to unlock the shortcuts underneath my house. This being one, I needed wedges, planks and I needed iron parts to unlock this. With this debris now cleared, it was now a much shorter walk to get from my house into town. There was a lot more degree piles down here that we could clear out that would give us shortcuts to other areas, such as the church and the area where we go to extract all sorts of things from the corpses. <laughs> So, I went back to the Inquisitor today, it's amazing how quickly these weeks actually rotated in the game. He gave me a task to get flyers and firewood. Firewood was pretty easy, didn't know how to get flyers at the time, but we do touch off that later on in the video. Once we were finished talking to the Inquisitor, it was time to pay a visit to Haradric. I had four burial certificates accumulated, sold all those for six silver, I was really happy with that. With all that silver I could purchase lots of useful stuff for the graveyard. I then went on a quest to get as much honey as possible to give to Dig so he could teach me the recipe for the cake. Once I had accumulated enough honey, which was five in total, I then gave that to Dig and he gave me the recipe to make the cake, which was great. Making the cake, however, was no easy task as multiple items were required in order to actually make it. It was, however, worth the effort because the cake almost fills your energy bar right back up to the top. So it was back to our lovely graveyard and we were just accumulating more carrots and wheat the more wheat I got, the better, of course. I also got a new technology here where I can make a sword and iron armor. And I didn't actually experience combat yet in this game, but I was pretty sure that eventually I'd find a dungeon or something where these items would come in super handy. I did have enough skin accumulated to make an iron armor, so I made that straight away and that increases my defense, which was cool. I also wanted to make the sword, but I needed some hemp in order to make that, so I'd have to come back to that later. It was then time to visit the bishop, I told him that the graveyard was looking a little bit better as the quality was over 5. The bishop was super happy about this, and he hereby pronounced me the official keeper of this holy place. I could now hold sermons in this game, which was really cool. Another really cool feature I unlocked was the royal services mailbox, and we could use this to purchase perks that would allow us to progress the game further. All these perks, however, required money. I did get some exhumation permission papers here for one silver 75 copper, and I don't actually end up using those, so it was a huge waste of money. I also got the citizenship for 10 copper as well, because it was very cheap, and that increased some friendship points with the royal services. So I'm sure that would come in handy later on. I also got access to a place here underneath the church. It was like a study area, and it had a study desk here where I could kind of break down items and get blue technology points for doing so, because I really needed blue technology points to get some of the cooler technologies this game had to offer. I also came across an NPC here, his name was Snake. I told him I was the graveyard keeper and prior of the church. He didn't seem to care and told me to stay out of his way because he had a dagger. So I needed to try to convince him that I was his friend in order to progress the game further, but I needed five faith in order to do that. Uh, so we'd have to come back to him later with that so we can get access to other cool features this game has to offer. Faith was hard to get at the moment because as far as my knowledge went, I could only attain it once per week when I did a sermon when the followers come into the church. So, it was time to make that lovely cake. I wanted to buy some fresh eggs here. I also learned some recipes, the omelette and the fried egg. I then went down and spoke to an NPC here by the name of Wagner and he gives me a quest to get him a paper and ink, which I can get from the astrologer of course. But all of these things would require money. I can also make these items myself, but I just didn't have the perks right now to do that. The donkey then decided to go on strike, and he's now advising that he won't deliver corpses anymore for free. I would have to give him some items in order to get the corpses going forward. He also left a poop on the ground, but it was actually very beneficial for me because when I eventually got around to processing this poop, I did get some really cool seeds out of it, so I was very happy with that indeed. So inside his poop was carrot seeds, 12 in total, which means I could do four batches of carrots. So, thank you very much, Mr. Donkey. 
I decided to go to the blueprint table just underneath the church there. I decided to make a church workbench, which would give me access to more cool items that I can make in this game. I also needed to make some paper as well, and the best way to do that right now is to either get skin, which I can extract from corpses, or bat wings, which I can get from finding bats when I travel the lands at night time. I also found an NPC here called the Merchant, and he only appears on one specific day every single week. So when this day does come around, it's important to talk to this guy because he sells very important items that are needed for progression. So I decided to do some more exploration here, and I was also getting honey too whenever I saw it, because the more honey I got, that meant the more cakes I could purchase. I found a cool area up here that eventually I could kind of turn into a, a beehive area, where you get even more honey, and I destroyed all these leftover beehives as well to get things like flitch and nails and whatnot. So here's just a little bit of combat, which is very rare, so I just had it show it here where these bats were attacking me at night. And the donkey then comes back and decides to tell me that he's not going to give me the next corpse because he's on strike. <laughs> so I had to make a little structure here to put carrots into to get future corpses off the donkey. Ten carrots in total would get me two corpses from the donkey, so I just meant I had to get more carrot seeds from the farmer and make sure that I also had a big farm filled up to the top of carrots to keep the corpses coming in nice and fresh. So it was time to make more firewood, smelt more iron bars because I needed a lot more iron to make a lot more structures in this game and to progress the game further. I also decided to repair the corpse hatch. Now this is just one repair. I also had to repair it from the outside as well so that when the donkey delivers corpses in the future I can just get them inside this area instead of having to cart them in from the outside. It was also time to get some cars that I planted, put those into the crate here so I could activate the donkey again. When this was done, unfortunately, the donkey still wasn't happy. I had to get some oil for his wheels. Fortunately, I knew I could purchase this from the NPC called Dig. So I went straight over to Dig, had a chat with him, and not only did I see that I could buy seed oil from him, but I could also get hemp rope and hemp seeds, which I actually needed to make some items later on. So it was just good to have that knowledge. When I gave the donkey the oil, he wasn't pretty happy about that. Dropped off the corpse, went on his way, and I went back to extracting... God only knows what from these corpses. <laughs> it was time to get the ball rolling with the Wagner quest. I had some flesh extracted from that corpse so I could make some pigskin paper. I also added cake to almost fully restore my energy. And I also learned a technology where I could make ceramic bowls and polishing paste. And of course the potter's wheel which was needed to make these items. So that was another item that I could put on the graveyard. Which would allow me to make some cool pottery pieces. I also started decomposing intestines and things like that to get more blue technology points. And I got an absolute mountain of points from deconstructing that item, which was great. As a result, I got more technologies, such as insects. I could now gather bees and moths from foraging, which I needed in order to get the fishing rod from the lighthouse keeper. It was then back to the lovely carpentry bench here, and it was getting more planks, because I wanted to clear up more debris underneath my house to unlock more shortcuts, and I was making more complex iron parts as well. It was time to repair the bridge here to the west of my actual graveyard, this would unlock a whole new area, filled up to the top with surprises, resources, and some other bits and bobs that are a little bit outlandish. <laughs> there was lots of iron around this area, which was great, so I spent the rest of the day just mining up all of the iron around this map. When I was finished with getting all the iron, I had to run back to the graveyard because the donkey had delivered a corpse, and you had to be quick on your feet to get those corpses because they start rotting away on the ground and it will just lower the quality of the corpse. So I put down a stone gravestone this time, and I put down a wooden fence, and that brought the quality of the graveyard up to 15, which was pretty good, but the quality would need to be a lot higher to make some decent progression. I also got the Master Gatherer technology here. This meant that every time I foraged up mushrooms or whatnot, I'd get more for it. I also got the writing technology as well, so I could make some notes and chapters. This would allow me to make books down the road, which were needed to make different kind of sermon scrolls. So I got the soft cover, the hard cover, and the book technology here as well. You couldn't actually sell these as far as my knowledge goes, but you did need them to make some cool documentations. So we were back making more planks, story of our life, we're always making planks, but I needed them to clear some debris and to unlock more areas in the game. I also increased the yard space as well by accumulating all those resources, and I can now put a lot more structures down in my lovely graveyard area here. It was then time to make the pottery wheel, and once this was made I can then make some bowls, which I needed in order to give to the bishop so I could advance the quest there in terms of upgrading the church. I was also able to get some mats as well, so I was able to go straight back to the lighthouse keeper, give him the mats, and he would give me a fishing rod, so I could now fish in this game, which was really cool. There was loads of fishing points all over the map in this game, 
and the fishing mini game was pretty simple. Very similar to that of Stardew Valley, don't know if you've ever heard of the game, <laughs> but much easier. So I just got some anchovies there, I also tried other fishing points too to see what other types of fish there was, and I got a gudgeon there as well. These were all regular quality fish, I would need higher quality fish in order to complete some quests down the road. I also got my shovel out and I started digging up some clay, which I needed of course to make all of the pottery items, so the more clay I had, the better. Once I had the clay assembled, I just had to mix it with some water and I could make tons of ceramic bowls here, and I just needed 20 to give to the bishop in order to progress the quest with the church. I also got some new technologies today as well, I went with bee domestication so I could make beehives. This meant I get my hands on even more honey, and I needed honey of course to make more cake. I then went to the right services mailbox and I got the rightful citizen papers, it was only 3 syllabus so I said why not, I probably need it later on, and I picked up the town pass too because it was for free. It was then time to hold my first official sermon. Now I only had a church quality of 5 so I wasn't going to get a whole lot of faith or money, but it was better than nothing, and I needed faith to decompose more items to get more blue technology points, so it was something that I had to do every single week. Unfortunately, you can only do one sermon per week, so it was difficult to accumulate faith, especially at the start of the game, but eventually it gets a bit easier because you can upgrade the church and you get a lot more followers, so you get a lot more faith. And it was a really cool cutscene as well. So most of these followers will say okay or nice and they just throw some faith at you. You could use higher tier sermons, but without having the necessary church quality requirements, they might not like your attempt. And once the sermon is finished, then they'll put money into this little box and you can just go down, click on the box then, and get the money that they put in. For now, it wasn't a whole lot of money, but it was better than nothing, of course. 33 coppers. <laughs> Eventually, that'll turn into silver. So, it was time to upgrade the quality of the graveyard even more. I had some wooden frames that I made, so I decided to use up all of those. I also had a lot of red technology points, but what was holding me back was the blue technology points. I needed a lot more blue to get a lot more of the technologies in order to progress the game faster. I also went back to the swamp area, I was trying to get at those iron veins, but I didn't know how to get down there. I did speculate that maybe I had to find a way past that big tree, but for now I didn't have any sort of technology that would allow me to get around it. I did however find a little clearing up here that I could destroy using some materials, and I almost had to destroy it, but I ran out of energy, story of my life, so I had to eat some mushrooms. <laughs> Finished off the clearing, and when I went up here then I got access to a new area called the quarry. And this actually had a bed up here as well, which is really nice. So this is basically like a second base, and you can set up a mining operation up here. And it gets really interesting later on in the video because you can start looking at some of the automated processes, which saves you tons of time and energy. But for now, I did find a vein, which basically gave me an unlimited supply of iron chunks, so I didn't have to worry about iron accumulation anymore. There was also a stone deposit up here too, but I needed to get some wedges in order to access that. And over here was a marble deposit. So I needed to bring up some flitch nails and some complex iron parts in order to make a marble quarry there. And just over to the right then we had a well and we also had another mines. I thought that was a dungeon up there that I could go into it, but I actually couldn't. When I tried to enter, it just gave me a message saying that it was filled up the top with toxic gases. So something that doesn't need to breed would have to go in and get the resources for me. So I kind of knew there and then what that was going to entail later on in the game, given the fact that I work with corpses all the time. I also did a little bit more fishing too in the hopes to get some new fish, but it was just the same fish over and over again. I would have had to upgrade my fishing rod I think if I was to get higher quality fish there, and that's something we might do later on in the video as well. So I decided to put some effort into this new area that I unlocked, by just putting down some simple structures. I also had some wooden wedges on me as well because I wanted to try out the stone deposits to see how effective it actually was. I just needed four wooden wedges to get back two stone chunks and that wasn't bad. Now there was still plenty of stone around the map that I could just get for free but I suppose this would come as super handy later on if I needed stone for other projects and all of the other stone in the map was just exhausted. And before I knew it, it was time to give yet another sermon. So there's only six days in this game and it just goes around in a continuous loop all the time. As far as I'm concerned, you don't go into a year two or a year three. It just goes around six days constantly. And each day, an important NPC will appear that you need in order to progress the game. Once I got my lovely tree fade from that sermon, it was straight back to the study bench. And this time, I studied the heart. I got loads of blue technology points, which meant more technologies for me. The blue points were holding me back all the time and because fate was very limited, 
I didn't have any sort of effective means of farming blue points at this moment in time. I did however have enough points to unlock the circular saw so I could now make those wooden beams and I needed those to clear up certain debris all around the map as well to make progression that little bit easier for me. So I also went back to the yard blueprint here and made the circular saw machine and this was going to come in so handy as well for making planks because you could just make the planks way faster. You did however go to a lot more resources. So you could sacrifice one wooden log for example and you could make a few wooden planks that way as well. But more importantly I could make the wooden beams. Just needed a wooden log, add some iron parts and we could make those beams no problem. So once I made all the beams I decided to unlock some more technologies. I looked at the stone gravestones here. I could make the stone cross, I could also make the stone fencing and that would further increase the quality of the graveyard. I also got the cremation talent here as well. I don't actually end up using that because I didn't come close to filling out the graveyard in this first 100 days. I did however come back down underneath my house and it cleared out this path. I had the wooden beam so I could do that. That was a handy shortcut unlocked to get to the church very quickly. So if I ever needed to come down here to get paper or to make any sort of books or scrolls, it'd be much easier to do that. There were more shortcuts I could unlock, but I had to go back and make more beams and whatnot for that. It was time to harvest more cars because I wanted more corpses off the donkey, so I had to get more carrots for him, because he's not going to work for free for us anymore. I did finish off the debris down here though, so I now had this whole area unlocked underneath my house, bar that gate of course where I needed the magic key to open it, but the shortcuts had come in super handy and they were great time savers. I then spent the rest of the day just running around the map, collecting stone, because I wanted to make lots of stone fences to upgrade the quality of the graveyard. I was also getting blue technology points for making these stone grave fences as well, which was really nice, so I didn't mind making as much of these as possible. It was time to replace all of the wooden fences with the stone fences, which would further increase the quality of the graveyard. I had it up at 23 at the moment, and there was room for huge improvements. The only thing that was holding me back now was energy. I still didn't have a huge supply of resources I could take to quickly replenish my energy, so I still had to rely on bed the odd time when I got tired. I did accumulate enough resources to make this vine press though, because I, I needed to make silver wine to advance some of the quests in the game, so that was the first step in order to achieving that. But you can make loads of things with this, you can make apple juice, berry juice, but more importantly, grape juice. So, I had the graveyard quality over 30, spoke to the bishop, that would give me 5 friendship points with him. But, that was just one part of the quest complete, I still had to get the church quality over 20, and I had to find a way to bring him 4 quality fish fillets as well. So, I had my work cut out for me. But, I did have more technologies I could unlock, so I got the light of fate, I also got the comfort of fate so I could make some benches, and I also got the business of fate and I could finally make the flyers which I needed for the Inquisitor, so it was all coming into place for me. There was also a thing here called the Price of Faith, and I could use this to make different sermon scrolls to increase the resources I got from doing the sermons, such as money and faith, so that was really cool technology as well. It was then back to the circular saw, we were making more planks because I wanted to make more church benches in order to increase the quality of the church. One church bench was six planks and some nails, so they were quite expensive for me at the time, and I managed to make one extra bench. <laughs> that got me an extra follower. And I was hoping this would give me a lot more faith. But I didn't really. In order to get a lot more faith from these sermons. I was going to have to put a lot more effort into this church. So for the foreseeable future. All of my energy and efforts went into making planks. Because I wanted to make more benches for the church. To increase the followers that went there. Which means more faith for me. It wasn't just benches I could make. I could also make other items that could hold candles. That would further increase the quality of the church as well. And eventually I would unlock more technologies where I could make other cool stuff that would further increase the quality too. Now I didn't actually have any candles on me, but I knew I could buy some off of the bishop that would increase the quality for that sermon, so that was handy to know as well. So it was time to get more technologies. This time I was looking at the power of faith. I could make the wooden church shrine and the confessional, and that would be some pretty big quality markers right there for me. There was also the smell of fate technology that would allow me to make an incense burner and I could also make incense, so I got that one too. The faster I could increase the quality of the church, the faster I could progress the quests in this game. Once the wooden shrine was built, I had the quality up to 18, which was pretty nice. I also decided to make some bread because I had loads of dough lying around the place. So I decided to make lots and lots of bread, which would give me lots and lots of energy. I also made a couple of more benches as well, and that got the quality up to 20, so I was really happy about that. 
That means I could now talk to the bishop when he comes around on church day, and that would be another part of the quest complete, but I still needed to figure out a way to get those quality fish fillets. I also made a wine making barrel, but that was obsolete for the moment, as well as the vine press, because I still didn't have any grapes or items that I could put into those machines. But because I had the resources on me, I decided to make it now, so that when I got the grapes eventually, I'd be able to put them straight into those processing machines. This time it was time to study the brain. This would give me a lot more blue technology points. Um, so this means I could just get a lot more technologies. Because I wasn't lacking in the red or green technology department. Because I was always cutting down trees and mining and foraging. Blue was still really hard to get. I got the gardening perk here. Which makes gardening a little bit easier for me. It also slightly increases the odds of me picking up higher quality crops. Which was good. I also went to a coal deposit here too. And I ended up getting loads and loads of coal. Because I needed lots and lots of fuel to process those iron ores into iron bars. My pickaxe broke, but that's okay. Tools in this game actually break all the time. I just don't show footage of me repairing the tools because I think it's a bit boring. But I do have a waystone the blacksmith gave me for repairing tools, which doesn't consume a whole lot of energy. I made 10 more iron bars here using my lovely furnace. Then it was back down to make a scroll shelf. And this was needed to store scrolls and chapters and books and things like that. Also made a desk as well. I put it over there to the left. I can use that to make other cool items. So I was now entering into the portion of the game where I wanted to make chapters and books and scrolls and things like that in order to progress the game faster. Spoke to the bishop here too, he was happy with the church quality, but in order for me to get a cathedral, which was I suppose end game, I had to locate high quality fish fillets for him. So I bought some candles off him, put those into the candle holders and they increased the quality by one, but they weren't permanent. These candles would eventually just run out. So with a quality of 22, I then decided to hold a sermon. I still had my original scroll. Eventually, I do get a better one, one that increases the money the followers give. But as we can see there now, I had a lot of followers assembled. And each of these followers would actually put money into that box. So I was hoping for a really nice return this time. Unfortunately, they're only putting in between 5 and 7 coppers each. So I knew at that stage it wasn't going to be a whole lot of money. But more importantly, I did get six faith. And that was a lot more valuable to me right now than money. So I decided to visit the town. And because I had the town pass. Gave that to the guard. The bridge opened. Went down a little bit. And I got struck by lightning. Which means I couldn't actually enter the town right now. So either there is no town in this game. Or I could get to the town eventually. But I just had to do a couple of more quests for other NPCs. To actually get down there. So after I died. Just got a cool cutscene here. And the skull Jerry basically told me to talk to this guy here named Snake, make him my friend, he might have a way for me to get into town, or I might be able to get him to go to town to get me items that I needed so I could actually leave this land and go back to my regular life. <laughs> so Snake here wanted me to bring him a key, and I had the key on me at the time, and I had to get some resources here to turn it into a magical key so we could actually open up that door that was behind Snake. So this was another big quest that I had to do. Once I had the key made, I went straight back to Snake to give him that key. Because I wanted to see what was back there. And there's actually some really cool stuff back there. So when I gave him the key, I got 10 friendship points with him. Got a cool cutscene here now as well. Where this door will open up and we can access a new area of the game. The main reason I wanted to access this area was to get the diary to give to the astrologer. So he would give me information on how I could get home. But when I decided to go into the room, I died again. So there was powers that be that didn't want me to get that diary straight away. I did come across a new NPC here, his name is Gunther, but this guy doesn't want artifacts, oh no, this guy wants to be tortured because he loves pain apparently. So in order for him to answer a couple of questions, he wanted me to hit him a few times just so he could feel pain again, and I thought this was actually hilarious. So I hit him once with a sword, that was enough for him, he said that was really good. But more importantly, this guy is going to open up a lot of automation that this game has to offer, so he will now give me the ability to reminate corpses and I could use these corpses then to do various tasks for me all around the map such as gather resources and process goods. I also got access to some zombie juice here which was needed to resurrect the corpses but I didn't actually know how to make more zombie juice at this time. So I got to the technology that cost second chance and I also went into the dungeon here as well. There was 15 floors and totally I had to complete. This was just the first floor, it just had some bats and some slimes. So I went back to the wizard here, I asked him I needed his help, I told him I needed ink and paper because I wanted to complete that quest I got from Wagner there ages ago, and then I ended up buying some 
some ink and paper. The only thing is that I couldn't give him the ink and quill. He needed an ink separately, which means I had to go back to the astrologer and buy that on its own to give to Wagner because he was just one of those people where if you didn't give him the specific item, he just wasn't going to be happy about it. I did, however, make a resurrection table here using a technology I just learned that I could use this then to remnant a corpse and I could then order that to do various tasks. So it was all getting really exciting. So I purchased lots and lots of grape seeds off the merchant. They were very expensive, but I needed them in order to make Silver Star wine so I could progress more of the quests. I also went back to Kresvold here, the blacksmith. I sold him all of the iron bars I had to get money so I could get more grape seeds because they were very expensive. Once I got that money, I purchased more grape seeds, went straight back to Witch Hill, and it was time then to unravel all of these lovely grape blots, because I was going to fill all these up with grape seeds, I was going to get loads of grapes, make loads of wine, and progress the quests that way. I thought it was going to be easy, but it wasn't, and we'll find out soon enough how difficult it actually is to get Silver Star wine. So, it was time to get more technologies. Softness of Faith, this gives me the soft church bench, which increases the quality of the church even more. I also went back to the Inquisitor here and I finally got the flyers that he needed and the firewood. The flyers were easy enough to make, I just needed some ink and some paper and I made those no problem at all. That meant that there could be another fabulous witch burning. Not only that though, the Inquisitor now trusted me a little bit more, so he'd give me more items and more quests in order to progress the game that little bit further as well. Once the burning was completed, I then got a new quest from the Inquisitor to make wine. He wanted 10 silver quality wines in total. That was going to be quite a task to achieve. We was then back to the farm and we were going to get wheat, we were going to get beets, we were going to get carrots. I decided to grow the beets just to see if I could access some new recipes inside the house. I also fixed the corpse hatch here as well. That means from now on whenever the donkey drops off the corpses, they will go underneath the house so I don't have to drag them in from the road. I also got access to the west side of the graveyard here too beside the church. That means I had a lot more space to play around with when it comes to the future of the graveyard quality. So, I got another corpse here now, and I started experimenting with this one. I tried to remnant it, but I couldn't because the quality of the corpse was too low, so I just extracted it and buried it. It was that time of the week again, it was time to give a new sermon, and I just used my regular scroll again, this time nothing special there, but I do start to upgrade those eventually to get a lot more faith. So, all the followers just came back in, it was just the usual gathering of faith and gathering of money. When that was finished, I looked at other scrolls, the prayer for donations, for example, looked like a pretty good one because this would give me more money every time a sermon ended. So I went with that one. I also got lots of blue technology points for making that too, which is pretty cool. So the next time a sermon comes around, I use that scroll instead. It was then off to get more basic resources. I was looking for stone this time. I was also looking for berries to make more cakes. And I was looking for more honey as well because you need a honey to make the cakes too. It was definitely worth the grind though because these cakes are just so overpowered. So I got another corpse today put it on the bench and I was just taking skulls off it this time because it was an area just outside of the dungeon where if you had accumulated enough skulls you could put decorations up there. I also had enough resources to make lawns and each lawn gave me a four quality to the graveyard which was massive so I made as much lawns as I possibly could and that gave me a huge increase in graveyard quality. I also wanted to make some beehives but I needed 10 bees in total to make that so I had to go and harvest a lot more honey to actually get that. So I got the beekeeper pork here. This means I can get a lot more honey from the beehives whenever I find them on the trees. That was pretty cool as well. There was also a clearing up here that I can get rid of by accumulating some resources. So I got around to getting the resources, popped open this clearing, and when I went up a little bit, I saw this giant tree, and eventually I could use this site to get a zombie to bring back wood to the graveyard all the time, which would save me a ton of time and energy. So that was a really good place as well. There was also lots of trees up here too, and there was some beehives that I could harvest in order to get lots and lots of honey. But more importantly, some of these would give me bees too, because I needed to get 10 bees so I could make my own beehives as well. So I managed to complete an area up here where I could meditate, but it was more or less the same as the bed. It would just accumulate energy, but time would go forward a lot faster. So I wasn't going to use this that much because I was at the stage in the game now where I had access to a lot of resources, I could make lots of foods so I could restore my energy effectively all the time. So I went back down to the astrologer here, it was time to do some more trading. This time I just purchased an ink from him because I wanted to give that to Wagner so I could complete that quest. I also traded with Cordy here, he actually took stone off me for money which was great. Didn't know this guy even existed <laughs> because I didn't do a whole lot of exploration yet. I just went to some corners and areas here and there. 
So I got my first grape harvests, got some bronze and silver quality grapes. I also got some grape seeds so I could plant more grapes in the future. Gave Wagner the ink. And this time he asked me to get him some Silver Star wine. And every time I give him a Silver Star wine, he would give me a Silver Star story, I believe. At the time, didn't know if the stories were that good. But I suppose it was worth noting that if I ever needed stories down the road, he'd be the man to get stories off of. I did, however, decide to make my first book. And I got lots of blue technology points from this, so I was really happy with that. It's also worth noting, too, that if I was to study this book, I would get 30 knowledge points. And you also need that to, you know, decompose items, too, to get the blue technology points. So if I ever needed lots and lots of knowledge points, the books were going to do it for me. So I had another sermon today, and this time I used the money scroll. And now each follower gave me a whopping 43 to 45 copper, which was really nice. So I got a few silver from that sermon. Also made more dough today because I could use this dough to make either more cake or to make more bread. Once the cooking was out of the way, we were back harvesting more honey. But more importantly, I wanted to get bees. Unfortunately, you weren't guaranteed to get bees every time you harvested the honey. So it was going to be one of those things that would take a very long time to accomplish. So I decided to make more bread today. I could make 40 bread in total, allowing me to do way more tasks and not have to use the bed to speed up the day. So I could get a lot more done in the days. So I'm back down to the farmer and this time I wanted to get tons and tons of car seeds off him because I really wanted to increase the rate of where the donkey was just bringing me these corpses because I wanted to start renovating a lot more. So I actually found a zombie here under a pile of rubble and when I unlocked the zombie here, it unlocked a technology perk for me where I could get that zombie to start cutting wood. But you could also get the zombies to process materials too into goods which is really cool. So it was time for yet another sermon because there's only six days in the week and because the days are so short, it comes around quite fast. So when the sermon was finished, it was a lot more money for me, but more importantly, a lot more faith. So I met a porter station here and these porter stations act as transport points where the zombies would go from the porter station down to your graveyard to deliver goods. I also met a beehive, went back to the farm and started collecting all these carrots. And all these carrots would primarily be used to give to the donkey so that the corpses would just keep flowing for me and they would just go straight into that corpse hatch making them a lot easier to manage down the road. So it was time to harvest the grapes and I was hoping for lots and lots of silver star grapes to make silver star wine but you weren't guaranteed silver star wine if you process silver star grapes you just had a higher chance. I also went to the merchant bought more grapes off him with all the money that I had. He also had silk too which was worth noting because I do end up buying silk off him to make the better church benches to increase the quality of the church. So I got some more honey today, I also got some beeswax, 4 honey in total from that, that was really good. Honey on its own is also really good for restoring energy as well. You get like a 30% energy recovery from eating honey, and honey was now really easy to get. Especially because I had my very own beehive as well, that I could just harvest that every couple of days. So, I managed to make another zombie, I decided to put him to work on the actual work yard area here. But I do take him off that eventually, and give him a much better task. I also had enough resources accumulated to make the furnace level 2 and that was needed in order to make steel and other stuff like that. I also got the technology to make the zombie ore mines so zombies can now enter that mines with the toxic gases and I also got the woodcutter technology as well so the zombies could cut wood from that big giant tree which is really cool also. So I harvested more carrots that meant more corpses from the donkey. And it was time to give yet another sermon that was more faith and money for me. So things were starting to come along now pretty well. So I finally managed to gather enough resources to make this area into an automated wood farm. And once this area was built, I could then assign that zombie to just constantly cut wood from the tree. And he could just put the wood then onto that stockpile there. But I needed a second zombie to take the wood from that stockpile and bring it down to the farm. So that area wasn't fully automated just yet. I also got rid of this log here too which means it was now a much shorter walk to access the grapes and to get onto Witch Hill if I ever wanted to talk to the Inquisitor going forward for quests and what have you. So it was time to harvest the grapes again and this time I was hoping for a lot more silver quality grapes. I then had enough to make some wine. This would give me 20 wines in total. There was a 100% chance to get a, a bronze quality wine but only a 50% chance to get a silver quality. I was really hoping that the 50% would activate and I'd get 20 silver quality wines from the winemaking barrel there. I also went back to the merchant too and I bought more grape seeds. So he had 8 in total that was enough for 2 batches of grapes. I also purchased some silver star wine as well with the rest of the money I had accumulated. 
And I gave one to Jerry here just to advance his quest. So I got 20 friendship points with Jerry and he waited a long time for that. But that didn't actually push any quests forward right there with Jerry. I would have to activate other quests in order to push him forward down the road. Went to Cresvold too, sold up iron bars to get even more money. And I spent the rest of the day then just mining up some iron chunks to get iron ores. I also made a sword here too, which was much better than the basic sword I had. It would do a lot more damage. And it would also consume less energy too when I swung it around. So that was a nice upgrade for me there as well. It was time again to harvest more grapes. It was just all about getting that silver quality wine at the moment to give to the Inquisitor. I also decided to renovate another corpse, or resurrect another corpse I should say. And I could put this zombie up where the giant tree was. So now I had one zombie constantly farming wooden logs. And I had another zombie bringing the wooden logs from that area right down to the workstation for me. So I didn't have to cut down any more trees for the remainder of this game. Not only did it save me a huge amount of energy, but it was also going to save me a huge amount of time because wood is something you always need in this game to make bits and bobs to either do quests or to just clear some debris or access new areas. So I spoke to the merchant again, bought more seeds. I also made a bucket of blood here that I had to give to Snake. That was made by just getting regular blood from the corpses all the time. So I also had to give him bloody nails. Didn't know how to get the bloody nails at the time. Eventually, I found out that you had to kill these enemies to get the bloody nails, so that was easy enough to do. I did have to wash my health though, because once your health reached zero, you would die, it'd start you back in the house again, and you'd lose very important in-game time as well. I also found a cool way to dispatch some of these enemies by fighting them through um, structures such as the walls there. They couldn't actually hit me, but I could hit them because I had longer reach with the sword. That was pretty cool. It was then back to the circular saw, I was making wooden beams, I was making complex iron parts, I basically, I just wanted to make more wooden benches. But not just any wooden benches, I wanted to make the higher tier wooden benches, the soft wooden benches, which would give me a much higher church quality. It was time to get more technologies, this time I could finally afford the assembly stand, and I could use this to make joints, which were needed to make some of the advanced church structures. It was then back inside the house, and I was going to make some carrot cutlets, because I had an overabundance of carrots, so many carrots, that I already had enough put aside to make sure that the donkey would keep the different corpses to me. It was time to harvest more grapes, so I had loads of grapes to harvest this time around because I kept buying more off the merchant and I kept getting seeds back from getting the grapes all the time. So I made a second winemaking barrel here and the reason why I made a second one is because I had so much grapes accumulated. A lot of the grapes were just copper quality grapes, you know, so I wasn't going to get silver wine with those, but the copper wine was still valuable, I could sell it for lots of money. Or I could just use it for energy and health if I decided to go into the dungeon and progress the floors down there. So I only had a 50% chance to get a silver wine using two silver buckets. But I didn't have any other choice. I just had to keep grinding away until I got the 20 silver bottles so I could progress some of the main quests. So I gave Snake the bloody nails and this activated a new quest line. Plus I finally see now he decides to summon some sort of demon here. But instead it backfires on him, and instead we end up summoning a chicken. <laughs> so it was this really funny scene there. Um, he wasn't too impressed. He told me then I needed to get a book off the astrologer, which activated another quest for me. But in order to get that book, I was going to have to do some other bits and bobs that we'll touch off later on in this video. So I was making more complex iron parts, more wooden beams, more jointing. All these items were necessary to increase the quality of the church. I finally got my 20 silver red wines. I could now give 10 of those to the Inquisitor and get the ball rolling with his questline, which was great. Straight up to the Inquisitor, gave him the 10 wines. That increased the friendship by only 10. Uh, but more importantly, we were going to get another quest chain from him. So I was excited about that. So he taught me to make a buffet area. I needed some hemp, some planks and some nails to make that. The hemp wouldn't be a problem. I could either get the hemp seeds off dig or I could just purchase the hemp directly. But before I did all that, it was time to accumulate some money. So I had lots of bronze quality wine here. I sold all that to Hadric. I got almost 13 silvers for that. It was then straight after the dig and I purchased some hemp rope off him. Meaning I could easily make the buffet area now. So once the buffet area was made, I had to make two items to kind of unlock the next chain of quests. The first was beer, but it had to be gold quality. I also had to serve burgers. They also had to be gold quality. This meant... That in order for me to progress these quests, I had to get my hands on some fertilizers. So I needed a lot of blue technology points. I also got the brewing 
technology as well so I could actually make some beer but to make some good quality beer the fertilizers would be needed higher quality crops was something that I would have to invest my time into it was time to make some brewing stands in order to do so I needed regular stone pieces stone was actually something I was a bit short on at the moment once the brewing stand was made I checked out the mats needed to make an actual mug of beer so I needed water I needed hops and I needed wheat but to make a gold star mug of beer I would need gold quality wheat and hops which meant I wasn't going to get much further in this game without investing in those fertilizers so that was going to be one hell of a task to achieve I was also nearing the end of the 100 in-game days so I knew at this rate I probably wasn't going to have that quest done within these first 100 days but I more than likely would have it done in the next 100 days if I decide to make a continuation video so I managed to make the soft church benches I got the quality up to over 35 I was really happy with that and I got 9 faith for doing this sermon which was great that meant I could decompose a lot more items, I could study a lot more items and get a lot more blue technology points that way. I also figured out too that there was another way I could get blue technology points. It was by making stone grave fences and that got me a few points every time I made some of those. So with the blue technology points I decided to get the steel technology. I could get the iron hammer from this but more importantly I could go a little bit further and I could get the furnace to smelt out some steel bars which was needed to make some more of the advanced tools such as steel weapons, steel armor, steel pickaxes, steel shovels. This meant less energy consumption when I was doing the basic tasks of cutting down trees or mining ores or just digging up sand or what have you. I decided to go back into the dungeon. It was an area that I wasn't spending a whole lot of time in. I decided to put some more effort into this because I wanted to try to get down to floor 15 to see what was actually down there. My speculation was that once I got to floor 15 I'd be able to get that diary give that to the astrologer and then he'd be able to give me some information in terms of how to get off this land which is the main purpose of this whole game so i made another zombie today and this guy was going to be put to work up in the quarry area he was going to go into the toxic filled mine and he was going to gather iron chunks for me and that way i didn't have to actually mine iron anymore i could just bring the chunks down to the actual workstation and i could just convert the chunks down there into regular iron ores and then I could just smelt those into iron bars so I made two stations up here but only one would be active for now I could make more zombies later on if I wanted to increase my iron production it was also time to harvest more grapes so I didn't actually need the silver quality wine wine however was a great money maker so I still put lots of effort into gathering the grapes and making more wines to sell I also needed a lot of coal as well to get more fuel. I was also getting limestone and sulfur and other great stuff from this deposit. Now I didn't actually have a need for the sulfur or limestone right now, but I'm sure the need would rise down the road sooner rather than later. So I made some graphite today. This was actually needed to make steel so I could upgrade all my tools and upgrade my weapons and armor because I was still using the basic tools and these enemies actually hit for quite a lot. I also came across a cool deposit down here in the dungeon that gives me back silver. Now I don't actually end up selling the silver, I end up keeping it, hoarding it because I'm quite the hoarder because I probably needed that for some sort of quest down the road as well. So after the first submarine failed and we summoned the chicken, Snake gave me a quest to get a book here off the wizard called the Necromicon. But I couldn't get that off him right now, I needed more friendship points with the wizard so I had to get the diary first and then he would tell me where the book was so I could kind of advance the quest that way. So I went to the lighthouse keeper and I purchased a good fishing rod. Using this I was hoping to get higher quality fish which in turn would give me higher quality fish billets and it actually did. I needed four of these in total to give to the bishop to progress the church chain quests so I can make the church bigger, better, get more faith and get more money. So I went to the bishop, gave him the fish billets, he was super happy with that. <laughs> He then told me that I had to get 20 silvers in order to buy a building permission so I can make the church bigger. So I had to accumulate as much money as quickly as possible because the 100 days was almost over. So I ended up selling all the wine I had, didn't actually need the wine for any quests right now and I had loaded grapes grown back on the farm so there's no issues there. 22 silver in total off Hadric, I now had enough to get the building permission, gave that to the bishop and the church then changed into a nicer more lucrative church i also had to get right for citizen papers give those to the bishop too in order to expand the church in order to make more lucrative things inside to increase the quality of the church 
To complete the next chess queen, I needed 200 quality for the graveyard and 50 quality for the church, so that was going to be quite the task. And there we have it. That is the first 100 in-game days done of Graveyard Keeper. I really hope you enjoyed it. We actually went a bit over the 100 days. I think it was 102 or 103 days. It was just hard to keep count because the cycle just kept going around six days over and over again. So apologies there if we went a little bit over. But if you liked this 100 day video of Graveyard Keeper, let me know in the comments and like this video if you'd like to see a continuation, if you'd like to see 200 days. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.